So now we've made the base of the shoe and the top of the shoe. So all that's left is to sew our moccasin together. And once again, we're gonna look at this and say, which side's gonna look the best when it's showing the, to the top of the moccasin. So in this case, I'm looking at this edge where we slip stitched along the points and that looks the cleanest to me. So that's what I want showing when I fold it over, which means that I'm gonna need to sew this piece onto the moccasin like this. So I'm going to use some stitch markers to essentially kind of pin it onto the moccasin. I'm just gonna line it up, try to make it as even as possible and attach it using these pins. This isn't gonna hold it perfectly, but it will keep it from flopping around while I'm working on the sewing. And now I have a tapestry needle threaded with the same color of yarn, and I'm just gonna use one strand. So instead of knotting it at the bottom so that I have two strands, I'm going to use this and tie a knot somewhere on the inside here in an inconspicuous place so that um, I won't be able to see it or feel it when I'm wearing these. So I'm just gonna, that looks like an okay spot. I'm gonna tie it on. And I'm really trying to tie some pretty good knots since these are gonna be shoes and um, you never know what sort of wild things I might wanna do in them. So now that I have my string attached, to the inside of the shoe. I'm gonna sew this top piece on by going through the bottom loop of the top piece and then the bottom loop of the base of the shoe. So what I mean by that is when I look at this piece here, it looks like normal crocheted Vs of a row and I wanna go through the bottom one there, the one that's gonna be closest to the bottom of the shoe. So I'm gonna go through that and then I'm gonna also go through the bottom one of the, the base of the shoe. So it's gonna be like that. And that's gonna help us create a moccasin looking edge as we whip stitch around. So I'm gonna just keep lining these up as I go. Essentially, I'm trying to put one stitch, um, sort of line these up and do one for one, but there isn't necessarily gonna be the exact same number of stitches, so you might just have to kind of fudge a few areas. Um, and just line it up as best as you can. So I'm going through the bottom loop right here into the bottom loop right here, and then I'm pulling my yarn through, and then because we're doing a whip stitch, I'm going back up and repeating the exact same thing. I'm not going back and forth. I'm just over and over again, going through from the top, through this first loop, through the second loop, and pulling my yarn through. And as you can see, that should be making a pretty clean edge right here along the toe of the shoe. And like I said, I'm gonna do my best to line up the stitches one for one, but if they don't exactly line up, I might be putting, um, there might be a place where two of the bottom stitches are accounting for one of the top stitches or something like that. And my goal here is just to make this as smooth as possible. So whatever you have to do, as far as lining them up to achieve that smooth look is what you should do. Now that I've made it all the way around to the other side, I'm gonna take out this pin that was holding it together just so I can get into this last stitch. And once I pull that through, the entire top should be attached now. Our next step is gonna be to fold these points down and I tacked mine down just so that they won't flap around and they'll look a little bit cleaner. Also, this will help hold these laces down. So what we're gonna do is just lightly tie them right here. And 
we're going to take the yarn that we've been using. I'm going to just bring it around so it's inside the shoe. Now I'm going to fold this over and using this same piece of yarn, I'm just going to do one little stitch somewhere in here so that it will hold this flap down. And I'm just going to try to make it as hidden as possible. So I'm going to do one little stitch like that, bring my yarn back around to the inside of the shoe, and then come over to this other side and do one more stitch right here in the same way to just to tack this down. And then once that's in, I'm going to be able to fasten off my yarn. And then I will also be able to tie these laces into a knot. So as you can see right here, they're just sort of tucked underneath and tied in the center of these points. Once you've got them tied and they're a good tightness around your foot, you can always trim the excess laces if you'd like. So I'm going to fasten off my yarn and if you don't care to put any beads on your moccasins, then you're officially done with your first moccasin and you can move on to making the second one. If you do want to add beads, I will show you how to do that next. Now, if you'd like to add some beads to your moccasin, you're going to need some fishing line, which is also called monofilament, and a, the smallest needle that you can find. I don't have one that fits through the smallest seed beads that I have, so I'm going to be kind of taking the needle on and off um, to go in and out of the shoe, and then I'll put the needle or I'll take the needle off in order to thread the beads and then put it back on. So it's a little tedious, but that lets me get all of these tiny beads onto the slipper or the shoe um, and also poke through the crocheted fabric. So I'm going to leave this right here so we can kind of see what we're going for. And I've just attached a piece of fishing line um, to the inside of the shoe by just tying a knot around some crochet fabric inside. And now I'm going to take my needle off and I'm going to add the beads to this string. So now that I have the beads on my string, I'm going to thread my needle once again and then poke the needle through the crocheted fabric, pulling it through to the back. And now I have one strand of beads on the shoe. So I'm going to repeat this process to make each spoke of the wheel design. Now that I have all my beads on, I'm going to tie this string off inside the shoe by doing some normal sewing knots. And I'm going to do quite a few just because fishing line tends to be so slippery. Okay, so now the only thing that's left to do is insert these little pieces of rubber from the flip-flop straps back into the sole of the shoe. And I've just cut around the edges to make them semi-round and smooth. And these back ones are tight enough that for me, I'm not going to add any glue because they're really stuck in there pretty well. But this middle one that would normally be between your toes, I'm going to add a little bit of this E6000 glue. And I'm just going to use a Q-tip because the bottle is a little bit crazy. And smear that around and then plug this hole like that. And now your shoes should be able to be worn outside in most conditions. Obviously, they're still made out of yarn, so take it easy. But this um, will make them essentially you no know, water or rocks will come in on the bottom. Now you've made your first flip-flop moccasin. And for the second shoe, you're going to repeat the exact same process, everything identical, and that will result in a shoe that, that um, actually fits the other foot. Since each side, the whole pattern is symmetrical, it doesn't really matter which foot you start with and which foot you finish with. 
I hope you enjoyed making these flip-flop moccasins. Check out my blog, makeandocrew.com, for more flip-flop slipper and shoe tutorials and a lot of other free crochet patterns. Thanks for watching and happy crocheting.